Last devlog, I implemented all the base features for Endoparasitic, and my next goal was to add stealth mechanics. The first step was making the environment. I wanted the stealth sections to take place in the maintenance areas I mentioned last devlog. I already had the tile sets made, I just needed to make some detail props to put around the levels. So I first made some pipes using an auto tile sprite sheet and added a drop shadow. Then I made a couple retro looking computer server racks, and combining this with the desks and computers from the lab area, I had a good mix of props. For the desks and server racks, I also wrote a script to automatically draw table legs, which makes them look a lot more 3D. With the environment done, I needed a stealth weapon and decided to do a crossbow. I wanted it to be very tactile, so I added a crank you have to wind before you can load a bolt on. The way the crank works is once you grab the handle, it rotates to face your cursor. To make it only rotated one direction, I take the dot product of the X vector on the crank with the direction from the crank base to the cursor, and if that is negative, don't turn. And then to prevent it from snapping around if you go all the way backwards, I take the dot product of the cursor vector and the Y vector of the crank. Then if both the X and Y dot products with the cursor vector are negative, your cursor automatically lets go of the crank. As you turn the crank, it gets the difference between the current angle and the angle last frame and adds that to a crank amount variable. Once this amount reaches a set number of full revolutions, the crank is locked into place and you can load a bolt on. And for both the bowstring and the reload screen and in your hand, I programmatically draw the lines to show it so that it will automatically update as you turn the crank. So with the stealth weapon done, I needed new enemies to fight with it. The first one I made I call the Corpse Trap. It's a dead body that lies in wait, and if you make too much noise either by shooting a gun or moving too fast, it will reach out and try to grab you. And their arms use the same IK code as the player's arm. These have been really fun to design levels around, it's a great way to make the player have to move really slowly and carefully, and also provides a big buff to regular enemies nearby since you can't use normal guns near them without getting hurt. They can also tank a lot of damage so it's usually not worth it to kill them. The next enemy I added was a mutated orangutan mini boss. I wanted to keep with the lab theme, so since I had mutated humans and mutated lab rats, the obvious next creature was a mutated lab monkey. It's blind and hunts by sound, and if you move too fast too often near it or fire a gun and will get alerted and go into a hunting state where it runs to the source of the noise and then runs in circles of increasing size to try to find you. The way the circles work is it sends out eight raycasts to a short distance in all directions, runs to each point where the raycast ended in order, then shoots out another eight from the original source point to a farther distance and just repeats the pattern. I also made triggerable alarms that you can use as noise cover to fire your guns, but they can be destroyed by the orangutans. After you get the crossbow it gets easier to fight them since they can't hear where the bolts come from and have to start their hunting circle from where they got hit instead. A big change I made since last devlog was adding something a lot of people suggested, making so you have to actually grab guns off your back to equip them and load them. I made so right click is now a dedicated interact button for using buttons and stuff and for grabbing guns, and each gun now has a slot on your back it has to go to before you can move. I also put a light gradient on your arm so you can actually see your hand moving over your back. This new equipment system has made the game a lot more stressful, but also a lot more rewarding. It feels really good when you quick draw your revolver to shoot a rat down just before it reaches you. Speaking of the rat, I also improved accessibility on them by having an exclamation mark pop up when one spots you so you don't have to rely only on sound. Something else I've been working on is sound design. One of my goals with Endoparasitic is to improve my Foley skills. I wanted to challenge myself to not use any sound libraries but instead record all the sound effects myself. So I bought a Zoom H1N to do field recordings and have been editing everything in Audacity. But for gunshots I needed a little help. I hired a friend who owns guns and another friend who's an audio engineer to help me record gunshots and handling sounds. And for the monsters, I've just been doing voice acting on my microphone. Some other random things I've added, I made these small doors which I've been using as entrances to cramped ductwork tunnels where you'll encounter a lot of rats. I completed and fully implemented the menu UI, and this was all made using Godot's built-in style features which are pretty versatile. I added in 2D lighting effects using Godot's built-in 2D lighting thanks to Jamather for figuring out a fixed lighting bug I mentioned in the last devlog. And I also got achievements implemented, I was able to completely copy my system from Rot Flesh pretty easily. And that's it for this devlog. Go wishlist Endoparasitic on Steam. It's releasing in a little over a week, hopefully. And back me on Patreon to play current demos of the game and help me playtest it.